spirit of God is in our body. And where the spirit of God is, there is no bondage. There are no diseases. There is no fear. So when we allow the word to work in us, when we allow the word to transform our minds, when we meet diseases on the way, we will cast them out because we know that we have the power inside of us. We know that we have the authority inside of us and we know that we have been given the might to do that. Amen. Amen. Shall we all be on our feet and begin service? Yes, you are the Lord. Most high, 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 yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. and pray and say father we bless your holy name begin to magnify the name of the living god it is because of him that we are here look into your life and see the many wonderful things that he has done for you protecting your going out protecting your coming in from the beginning of the year even up till this point has it not been good to you has it not been good to your children has it not been good to the church has it not be good to your household this morning open your mouth and bless the name of the living God somebody bless the name of the living God somebody bless the name of the living God somebody he alone deserves to be praised he alone deserves to be worshipped this morning we lift your name on high. This morning we say you alone is God. There is nobody like you. 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 There is nobody like
in Jesus mighty name we pray we want to open our mouth and invite the Holy Spirit somebody open your mouth and invite the Holy Spirit to take charge this morning we cannot do without you spirit of the living God we invoke your power your mind have your way this morning have your way this morning have your way this morning take over this service take over this atmosphere take over every heart take over every mind it belongs to you it belongs to you we shall to you spirit of the living God arise and descend in our midst arise and descend in our midst take over take charge precious Holy Spirit pour into us your strength pour into us your mind for we are a people of one heart and one mind and our hearts are open unto you ready to receive pour 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 that we will receive pour 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 that we may receive your power. Yes, your power. Just pour it in the name of Jesus. Pour it on your outfit. 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 Pour it on your outfit.
In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Jesus, beloved, whatever burden you brought into the house of the Lord, this morning open your mouth and lay it at the feet, lay it at the feet of Jesus. Even as you have come here, you have come to meet Jesus. Even as you have come here, you have not come to look at me, you have not come to look at Pastor, you have not come to look at your friends, you have come to encounter the King of Kings. You have come to encounter the Lord that lifts burdens. You have come to encounter Jehovah Shalom. You have come to encounter Jehovah Nisi. Lay it all at his feet. Cast your burden upon me. Oh, who are left laden? And I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we begin today's service in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Begin to give him worship this morning. He has shanted and 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 because you are Lord, who can be compared unto my God? There is none, there is none. We are yeah, shunned in the body we give you glory this morning we exalt your holy name yes you are the lord most high yes you are the lord most high yes you are the lord most high this morning you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord you are the lord most high you are the lord most high you are lord most high we give you glory we give you glory we give you glory we give you glory Yes, you are the Lord most high. We give you glory. We exalt your holy name. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Yes, you are the Lord most high. We lift up glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Angels bow before you this morning. Heaven and earth adore you. We give you glory. Arise, O Lord, receive your glory. Arise, O Lord, receive your glory. Descend in our midst. Descend in our midst. We have come to praise your holy name. We have come to magnify you. We have come to lay at your feet and say, Holy, holy are you, Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are great, yes, you are holy one. You walked upon the sea and raised the dead. You reign in majesty, you reign in majesty. Mighty God, oh, everything written about you, written about you is great. Yeah. 
glory, hallelujah. Yeah, everything written about you. Everything about you. We pleasure in our hearts. We lift our voice. Everything written about you. The mighty, mighty God. We worship you today. We give you all the praise. As we lift our hands. We pleasure.
Wonderful, wonderful is the Lord. Hallelujah, the 
Lord is King. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer all to thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer all to thee the sacrifices of praise. Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Oh, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, and we offer unto Thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer unto Thee the sacrifices of praise. Come on, and we offer unto Thee. The sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer all to thee. The sacrifices of praise. Oh, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Oh, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, and we offer all to thee. The sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer all to thee. The sacrifices of praise. Oh, I am in your presence to bless me now. I am in your presence to bless me now. Oh, I am in your presence to bless me now. Oh, I am in your presence to bless me now. Oh, I am in your presence to bless me now. I am in your presence to bless me. I am in your presence, you. 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 Bless me. Oh, there is something that made me come into your presence. My Alpha. Oh, there is something that made me come into your presence. My Alpha. My Alpha. My Alpha. My Alpha. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My Alpha, 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 my Alpha. Some people ask me, see, waiting to make me fall. I get into them, see. Jesus, they make me fall. Some people ask me, see, waiting, they make me fall. I get into them, see. Jesus, they make me fall. I don't find no. I don't find no. I don't find no. I don't find Waiting to make me fall. I got to tell them, say, Jesus, they make me fall. Some people ask me, say, Waiting to make me fall. I got to tell them, say, Jesus, they make me fall. I never know. I never know. I never know. I never know. Shout, give Lord a shout, oh say yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 Give Lord a shout, give Lord a shout, give Lord a shout. He's the mighty God. 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 
worship too together with the instrumentals. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Shall we call Pastor Samuel, your boy, to pray over the titled offering. Let's give him a big hand of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and tell him or her neighbor, you are welcome to the house of the Lord. Wow. Praise God. There's too much joy in the house of the Lord. Amen. It is too infectious. Amen. If you have not yet been infected, allow yourself. Amen. Stretch forth your hand with me, even as we pray together. Father God, we thank you. You are a good God. You are an awesome God. We thank you for another privilege to come before your presence. Lord, even as we came, we did not come empty-handed. We came to give to support your kingdom. As we have given, Lord, I pray that you will bless your people. Bless every family. Bless every household. Supply all our needs according to your riches in Christ. Lord, I pray this year, open doors for your people. Them that are looking for breakthrough, give them breakthrough. Those that are looking for miracles, grant them miracles. This coming week, Lord, I pray someone will receive a testimony. Even in this month of April, Lord, crown us with glory. Somebody need to laugh this month. I pray, put laughter on our lips, O oh God. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Amen. Shall we appreciate Pastor Samuel? Yeah, boy. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want you to welcome your neighbor. Ask someone how he or she is doing right now. Hallelujah. Please, I didn't hear you. 
Let us feel the echo in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I take this opportunity to welcome each and every one. If you are watching us online here at Shakana Glory Assembly of God, we are privileged to witness your presence in the house of God. Amen. Beloved, there's one important thing I always, when I get the opportunity to stand here, I challenge each and every one your Christian life through many ways, and you challenge me also. But in as much as we come to the house of God and we fellowship all the time, there is one important thing we need to honor. And that is what God, the leader that God has given us. In life, every human being has a downfall or has some lapses. We all do. But for you to live better with me and for me to live better with you, we need to see the weaknesses. My weakness, your weakness are very, very important. I cannot live with you every day, 100%, making you laugh all the time. One day I will wake up and I will make you cry. You will wake up and you will make me cry. But do you know what is important? The weakness that you see in me is something that you need to work out with me. If you cannot work your weakness with me, I cannot work my weakness with you. Brother or sister, there is no Christianity. So it is about time we honor what God has given us. The Bible says, people that he has given to you, that preaches to you all the time, those are the people you need to honor. Let me tell you, the only work for a pastor to do, the only work the Bible has assigned and underlined is to pray for you and be a shepherd over you and be your spiritual leader, comforts you in so many ways. Things that even himself can be down. He stood in it. Okay? In his sorrow, he must even be stronger to comfort you. We get such leaders and we just make them, we work on them because of my little weakness. How is it going to do to you? Rollins. I hope many of us know Rollins. Former president. It got to a time, it was a politics time. Wherever this man goes, people were not honoring him. You know what he said? He quotes the verse from the Bible. See, if you don't vote for me, eh? fish, fish is from the sea. The stones will rise up. The trees and the leaves will come and vote for me. It is likely what Jesus said. If you don't honor me, those people or those animals, those creatures will come and honor me. I will stand here to say to the congregation, it is about time we honor what we have. Pastor Samuel Yaboa is someone God has ordained. He is someone that God has given a wife. He is someone that God has given children to, to take care of. And we are his children also. Respect is what is needed to be accorded on him. Let us pray. 
to make sure this man is being taken care of no matter our weaknesses, ladies and gentlemen. He is a man of God. Whether you like it or not, he is a man of God. And God has ordained him and nobody can take it from him. I stand here and I declare with the power invested through God, this man will stand and rise and will do God's way. Let's give a big hand of applause to him. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes, me myself, I get overwhelmed. And when I stand in front of you and I look at him, you don't know what he see. At church, we have somebody. Let's respect him. Let's thank him. Let's say, Papa, thank you. <laughs> With the few we have, that is the greatest thing that we have. Do not call for the multitude. And within the multitude, these are the people within the multitude and they will collapse the quality that God has given to us. I'm not preaching. I am advocating for God's message. Thank you, God. I know I've been led by the Spirit. So let the Spirit continue to, to, to lead everybody here. Let's give me a big hand of applause to appreciate God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. That was my testimony. You see how powerful it is? <laughs> God is so great. You see, when there is no other day, there is no other day that I wake up. And let's give a big hand of applause to Mr. Alex and Brother Latif. Waking up to come here all the time. These two gentlemen coming here all the time to come and do all these things, it's not easy. Ever since I joined them, oh my God, it's not easy at all. But we praise God. If you have a testimony, you can come and then give a testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, Madam uh, Dickness has a testimony to share with us. Let's give her a big hand of applause as it's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want to thank God so much. Tuesday was my birthday. <laughs> I'm getting old, small, small, but <laughs> I thank God so much for adding another year to my age. On Tuesday, yeah, that was night, I kneeled in front of my bed and I prayed to God about something. I ask God, I don't need material things. I don't really value material things. If I have it, I have it. If I don't have it, I don't really care. So I prayed to God. I said, God, I want to know you and know you more. I already know God, but I want to know him more because I know what he wants to use me for. So I said, God, let your will be done. And I know he has started it already. So I give God all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Is anybody coming? Brother Alex, you should have joined her. Oh. You should have joined her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are we exhausted with the testimony? I see secretary. Oh, I thought secretary was coming for. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. How can we not love the King Kodia? Hallelujah. <laughs> I just want to thank God. The Lord has done a lot for us, and we are calling for testimony, testimony, and we are sitting down. I want to thank him for my life, for the life of my, my sweet husband, for the life of my children, <laughs> for the life of my children, and my family here and back home, and my church family, every single one of us. 
You all mean a lot to me and to my family. And I want to encourage all of us. I think yesterday on the prayer line, the Holy Spirit led us to pray about unity and love. And last week we were learning about love. Let us let love lead. Let us let love lead. We will not see our faults. We have them. We have the weaknesses, but we will not see them if love is the, 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 the driver, if love is what is leading us. Christ is love, and so let us let him lead. I love all of us, and if we have heard anybody, let us forgive. Forgive me if I have heard you, so that Christ will also forgive us your own transgressions. Amen. God bless us all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not feeling well that much, but um, I want to sing this song. Um, Auntie Pacho, Tubame Wai. Dear Odimia Bedri. Ayame Fedodo. Niawaya Mami. Ebrumentia Sieso. Inti me pa me ni na wa ye mi se irate wo ho ye ho wa se sa men jom na wa se sa me shebre wa se sa mi ti Ediana Swift, what the ceremony? Enti me pa me ni na wa ye mi se o irate wo ho ye ho. Amen. Thank you. Sorry. So on Thursday, I went to work, and jokingly, I was saying, oh, I'm sick, I'm not feeling well, so I'm not, I'm not going to come to work um, on Saturday. I was just jokingly saying it. So on Friday, I went to New York to go pick up my car. When I got there, they said there are no more ladies in the car. I was like, I, drive, I drove 30 minutes, uh, one hour and 30 minutes to get here. And so they said, um, they're not giving me the car no more. I sat there to like, um, almost 6, 7 p.m., and then they, they released their car. So I came home, and then um, Friday night, I couldn't get up from the bed. I can't speak. Like, I was just laying down, and then I started crying. And I was singing this song. It's only me and my daughter. My daughter barely comes in my room. I was laying down. I had no help. I don't know who to call. Basically, everybody calls me. I don't pick up. So now that I need help, who am I going to call? <laughs> and I was laying down, crying, laying down in my sleep, crying. In the middle of the night, I woke up and my daughter was sleeping next to me. That was weird. I was like, why are you here? She was like, I heard you screaming in your dream, help, help, help. And so I came to wake you up. And I was like, um, in my dream, I couldn't breathe. So I was gasping for air in my dream. So I didn't know it came out. Um, so on Saturday, I couldn't go to work. So I called my mom. So my brother drove all the way from Virginia and came here on Sunday. So we drove to my mom's place. My mom saw me and she started crying. She was like, hey, me baby, where were you? Me baby, where were you? And then, and then I was like, ah, nah, what, what this now? Yes, sir, what are you doing that? My mom was like, so you don't see yourself? Go, go look in the mirror, see yourself. You losing weight, you, you gradually dying. I was like, mom, don't say that. And she was like, um, kotomo jejo, kotode, kotode. And then she said all that, and then we all prayed, and my brother went back to, um, to Virginia. And so on Monday and Sunday, I couldn't come to church. I called Auntie um, Antoinette to bring Ariana to church for me. 
And so she came to church and she came back and she said, Mommy, everybody was asking about you. I was like, me? <laughs> and then I, all of a sudden, I see everybody calling my phone. Thank you all. Pastor, I mean, that was it. Thank you for calling me. Pastor tried to come to my house, but I never sent the address. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, Church. Thank you, Dickin. <laughs> thank you, Dickiness, Dickiness and slash Secretary. Thank you. I saw you blow you my phone, but uh, <laughs> I really am to Regina. I I really didn't. I don't. I'm not a person a person that speaks on the phone. Whenever I start speaking, I start crying, and so that's why basically I really don't like talking on the phone. But I can really test you or anything, but. I thank everybody for my life. I went to, I drove to work on Monday. They kicked me back home, be like, oh, you're not looking good. Come to work. But through all, I'm standing here, and I'm glad I was able to come to church today. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hey, yes, Amen. 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 Uh, <laughs> When you are a snowman, and you pray, or you know, when you are a snowman, and you pray, you must say, Yes, who did? I want you, it must say, Yes, who did? I want you, and Timmy, say, Yes, who did? I'm a boy, yes, who did? I'm a boy, yes, who did? I'm Hallelujah. Maybe we haven't thought about it. Have you ever thought about how you grow you grow tall? Be me, I'm short. How I became short, how some of you became tall. You have to give thanks to God. Sometimes, like when you go to the doctor, they tell you, oh, your blood count is good. This one is anemic. Have you thought about that? It's not because you are doing anything wrong. Though. Everybody is contomio. But sometimes your blood count will go up. Somebody's <laughs> one will go down. So give thanks to God in every situation. Acknowledge God in all your endeavors. And God will lift you up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to sing this song for anyone who is going through any trouble. Hey. I feel so sad, watch na so sad, na drew so. Me say na me na man kwa o, na me na man kwa o. E radi na ma obi sudi ya, o ma obi sudi ye. O bra o ni pasio, o ma o ni paso. O ma ma bra ni sufri futro mo, o ma ma bra ni ni sufri su su mi na so. So de ne ba tu a ma o, o ni ni. Monyam shanso atina o, ochna se se afe se se ne druso. Amen. Hallelujah. At this moment, I will call secretary to give us announcement. Let's give her a big hand of applause. Amen. Hallelujah. Our sister was saying that tomorrow by this time, it will be your turn for your blessing. 
God is still blessing. He's lifting some. He's elevating them. Tomorrow by this time, it will be your story. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless God for this morning and we thank him for all that he's doing in our lives. Amen. We welcome everybody to today's service. Hallelujah. If today is your first time worshiping with us, this is Shekinah Glory Assemblies of God. We meet here every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Amen. Please, do we have any first-timers today? If you're worshiping with us for the first time, give us a wave offering unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bless God. Amen. Um, our leadership seminar comes on next week, the 20th of April. Amen. So if you are a leader in the house, it's a Saturday, please put it on your schedule. Amen. We'll all be meeting. The address will be posted on the church platform. Amen. Everybody will receive the address, the place of the seminar. Amen. And this month, April, is our month of Anakazu. Amen. Say Anakazu. Anakazu. Amen. So like the way Pastor explained it last week, it means the compelling power. Amen. So we have to go out and also encourage our brethren to join us. Amen. Even those in-house that you haven't seen in a while, let's reach out to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Your neighbor hasn't been, you haven't seen your neighbor in a while. Amen. Knock on the door and invite them to church. Hallelujah. Amen. And remember, you are not the one compelling. It's the Holy Spirit who is going to do the compelling. Amen. Yours is just to obey. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, our brother Foster will be going to Ghana for his father's funeral. Amen. And we are encouraging everybody to support the welfare department so that our brother can go home and do the needful. Hallelujah. Amen. We say it's voluntary, but it is also necessary. Hallelujah. Amen. So, if we don't see Brad Foster, he's going to Ghana to bury his father nicely. Amen. He's still here. So if you haven't done yours yet, please see the King Kodia or Aunt Regina or the welfare department. Amen. Am I awesome? Am I awesome? Oh, am I awesome? We minister. Amen. So, Women Ministry Day will be on the 12th of May, and all women are encouraged to prepare themselves, and our men to please prepare yourself and come and support us. Amen. 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 So, that it will be beautiful. We can do it a little bit, but when you attach yourself, it's, it's grand style. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we'll be expecting all women to come on the 12th of May and also our men to come and support us. Hallelujah. Our weekly activities are as follows. Monday to Saturday, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. morning devotion. Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m. We have prayer tower meeting. And on Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. we have Jericho hour. Amen. It's a time of prayer. It's a time that we meet together to break some walls of Jericho. Anything that has become a hindrance, we come together and we pray that God himself will break them down. Amen. And on Saturday, we have preparatory class from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Amen. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Can we appreciate her more? Hallelujah. Amen. I think this is the time that i um, going to listen to the word of God. And uh, I have the privilege to invite Pastor Samuel Yeboa. Let's be on our feet to welcome Pastor Samuel Yeboa. Hallelujah. God is good. 
and all the time. Let me look at someone and tell him or her. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. You are welcome to the house of the Lord. Tell him again. Neighbor. Oh, whether you like it or not, God will bless you. I tell them again, neighbor, anytime I see you, I get excited. Move around and give about three people a high five and welcome them into the house of the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. For in the presence of the Lord, there is that fullness of joy. At the right hand side, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Shall we be seated in high places? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, before I share the word of God with you, I want to introduce a special friend and a special brother. Amen. Uh, how many of you still remember this is the year of the Great Commission? So it's a year of soul winning. Is that true? And it's a year of inviting our friends and our neighbors. Amen. So I think Pastor must set an example. Is that not right? Amen. Amen. Uh, it's a joy to invite my brother Fred. Fred, join me here. Put your hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, is he not looking like me? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. God by divine connection. Somebody say divine connection. <laughs> Amen. Uh, help me to connect with this brother. Amen. Uh, we have been friends since last year. I've been inviting him, and today he decided to worship. Amen. Uh, I believe eventually his wife will be coming as well. And we want to pray that the Lord that has begun a good work would continue to sustain him. Amen. Uh, do I have my Winding Wood family in the house? Winding Wood, wave. Okay, so he's in the Winding Wood environment. <laughs> Praise God. So, Fred, you have a lot of Wendy Wood people here. Amen. Praise God. Uh, amen. Uh, I'll give you the privilege to do it. Amen. So, he has a testimony. <laughs> Praise God. So, we will not take that testimony from him. So, uh, I just want him to give that testimony. Um, Fred. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, even though this is a testimony, it's, it's just to let everybody know who God is and how he works. So it's, it's going to be a little bit or maybe two minutes. Bear with me. Okay. So it all started um, somewhere 2022 where I came back from Ghana. So I, right from the airport, my boss called me and he was like, oh, okay, I just offered you a position. So I was like, okay, thank God. I mean, I didn't even ask for it. So it was just a surprise. So that's where... The whole show started. So after that, I think November 10th, if I'm right, I had my first accident. It wasn't that bad. It was okay. So I just thought everything was fine. So fast forward. January 4th, 2023, as of last year, for whatever reason, I don't know what happened, I got this crazy accident where like my life just flashed right in front of me like that. So when I came back into the body again, I realized the car was like all smoky. So the luckiest thing that happened was, it's funny though, because there was this fire marshal in the store when the, where the accident happened. So for whatever reason, he just came up and then he made the call and then he grabbed me out of the car. So fast forward again, within that same week, I think a week um, later, I was expecting my baby. So it was like, there was a lot going on. The, first the accident, now the baby within a week. Am I even ready now? No. All right. So fast forward again, it happened. Everything was fine. The baby came out successfully. Everything was fine. And then the, the problems continued. So from there, everything was fine. I went for therapy. Everything was fine. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't lift my hand up anymore. That was around somewhere June. 
So I had to like consider taking the surgery and all that. So I did the surgery and from there, everything wasn't that good. It took like three months because I had to like learn how to use my hand again and all that. So I think around from that place, that's when like everything got like really bad in the sense that I got, I was already depressed, but I was able to control it and then deal with it. But around that time with everything that happened, I felt like I didn't have enough time to process everything. I had to go back to work and it was just a lot for me to handle. So on my way back one morning from work, I nearly, I was this close, I nearly drove my car under a truck. And when that happened, I called everybody on my contact list, like my speed dial where I know when I call this person, this person is going to pick up. I called the first person, nobody picks up. I called the second person, they don't pick up. The third, the fourth person. That was when the incidents nearly, I was this close. So I was able to pull up somewhere, cried my soul out. And then the Holy Spirit was like, this is why I always want you to trust in me. Because when you put your faith and your whole hope in like human beings, they would definitely fail you. So from there, everything seemed normal. Everything seemed okay. But from there, I started having suicidal thoughts and like all that. I nearly, I was close. I was really close. But that's when the Holy, Holy Spirit was like, you see, this is what the devil gives you. He always, he always gives you two options. Whether to what? To stay or to leave. Sometimes even to stay, it's even still optional. He still gives you that same last option. Now listen, this is your last option. Take it and just leave. So I was this close. So fast forward, I met um, Pastor. Everything, how I met Pastor was just like, it was just a coincidence, yes. We met him, we spoke, and then everything was fine. So this year, I think I came back from Ghana and I started by then I had not asked myself why the accidents happened and all that. So I was driving to work and I was like, you know what? Why don't I, since I have this me time with the Holy Spirit and God, why don't I question God? Because sometimes I feel like we still need answers as to what happened. And then this is where the funniest thing happened to me. I, I questioned God and then the Holy Spirit is like, listen, this accident that happened was long overdue. It was supposed to happen long time ago. But anytime I take you out of this situation, you always don't see that I'm always in the background working for you. It has been once, twice, three countless times that I have saved you, but you always don't see it. So I had to allow this to happen for you to see who I am so you would acknowledge that I am the God that I am. So after I actually teared up, so I was like, okay, this makes sense now. Because I don't know why I had to go through that whole year. That, I feel like this, that year 2023 was the worst year ever in my life, ever. So after that was done, I was like, you know what, I now understand why. So this morning, if I'm standing here sharing this testimony with you, it's just to let you know, oh, one last thing. So after, after this whole thing, I think after the surgery, I went to my doctor's office and then I ran some tests. So the test came out positive where I had a terrible issue with my kidneys. But God still did a miracle. There was this night I was at work and I was like, God, you know you get to the point where you are too tired, where like you just get to the final step where you're about to give up. And I was like, I'm too, I didn't even go on my knees. I stood and then I was like, God, I'm tired. If you don't intervene, I'm just losing it. I'm, I'm, I'm just lost at this moment. So you have to take this burden off my shoulders, else I'll just lose it. And then a few months later, whatever I prayed about, the first thing happened. God did it, and I was excited. And then the second thing was I went to run another test, and for whatever reason, the doctor is like, whatever issue was wrong with the kidney, it's gone, but now it's inflamed, which is good. Because before it was worse. Now it's like it's flame. So it's a miracle. He doesn't even know how that happened. So I just came home and I was like, God, I thank you. Regardless of, of the answer I still got, it's still positive and I still appreciate the fact that you still intervene and then work with me. So this morning, I just want to encourage everybody that whatever we are going through, 
God works in his own time. We, we don't always have to push God for him to, to, to do things for us. Even when he's, well, he's behind us or back in the scene, he's still working for us. Even though we don't see it, even though we don't feel it, he's still well, working for us. So this morning, let's not lose um, the faith we have and hope. Whatever we are going through, trust me, God sees it. He knows it. He allows it to happen for us to see what he can do, how, how powerful he is. So this morning... I, I always say I want to come to church, right? You know how they say the soul is willing, but the body is weak, right? But this morning, the Holy Spirit is like, you lie bad. You, you, whether you like it or not, you will go. Because, because you have to share this testimony for everybody in the church to understand and know who or the kind of God I am. So they will serve me diligently with all their hearts, everything. So this morning, if I'm standing here, I just want to say thank you to God and for everything he has done for me. Amen. Beloved, spread forth your hand upon our dear brother. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, may God turn it around for his good. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Pray. Lift up your voice. Father, we thank you for the life of bread. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will watch over him, watch over his soul, watch over him. Lord, breathe upon him. Let the set purpose concerning his life be fulfilled. And Lord, we pray that the enemy would take his evil eye and evil hand off from his life. That he will live to fulfill his mandate. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Put your hands together, even as our brother. Take his seat. Amen. Praise God. Beloved God willing, coming Saturday which is the 20th, all leaders, we are going to meet for our leadership seminar. Amen? Uh, the information will be posted. We will reach out to you. And let's all gather so that we can learn together. Amen. Praise God. Men. Men. Now, um, beloved, both men, women, youth, anyone that is in this house, this year, our year of the Great Commission. Last week, um, I came and introduced five different groups here in the church. Amen? In view of that, we're going to have some special t-shirts. Amen. Uh, it's our dear brother Alex in the house. Amen? All right, so... Brother Alex is going to support us with the t-shirts. So every group, every evangelical wing is going to have a special color. Amen? So it will be a different color. So there are going to be five different colors in the house. Amen? And we divide ourselves into that five different groups for evangelism. Hallelujah. So watch out for that. That is going to happen very soon. Amen? Now, Mother's Day is coming. Hallelujah. Oh, do I have the women in the house? Oh, women, are you excited? Even though Mother's Day is not here, they are already reminding us. So let's prepare to celebrate that. And in June, Father's Day is also happening. Amen. Let's bow down our head for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Lord, speak to our hearts. This is the year of gathering. It's the year of you, O oh Lord, winning souls for yourself as we prepare to launch out to the deep and to go and minister to the multitude, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will give us the strength, the capacity, the tenacity, the resilience, that courage to go and speak boldly unto the world. Lord, I pray that Lord's souls will come to know Jesus. Many will come to the kingdom of God the kingdom of the devil, O oh God, will expire as God's kingdom, O oh God, get bigger. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love somebody say, Anakazo. Let's say it again. Anakazo. This month is our month of Anakazo. Hallelujah. Uh, for the benefit of those that were not here last week, we want to look at this term once again. When we say anakazo, what it is. Amen. Obviously, it's not an English word. 
Praise God. Because if I ask you what is anakazo, you may not be able to explain it. So anakazo is the Greek word. It's a Greek word that is translated to compel. Somebody say to compel. It also means to necessitate, to drive, and to constrain by all means. So this year, God is asking us to go out into the world to compel people to come to Christ. Hallelujah. And are you ready to go and compel? Oh, are you sure? Praise God. So today, we want to do part two of Anakazo. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved, we want to take our scripture reading from Luke chapter 14, verse number 16 to 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 16 to 23. So, the concept of anakazo is taken from this text or this scripture readings. Amen. And we are going to read it take our time and break it down this afternoon for everybody to understand. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. Somebody say many. So there was a certain man that actually threw a party and he asked his servant to go and bring many people to the party. Amen. All right. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them, That were bidden, come, for all things are ready now. Praise God. Come, for all things have been prepared for the party now. Come, Shekinah glory have thrown a party. And we have asked Auntie Regina to cook Ghana and Nigerian jollof. And it is ready now. Somebody say, it's ready now. Oh yeah, how many of you don't want to go to a party? Everything is ready. The salad is ready. The fish is ready. The meat is ready. The jollof, the uh, uh, eba and egusi soup is ready. Praise God. Banku and okra soup. What's your favorite food? Okay, Amala, awesome. All right. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. Wow. So somebody has thrown a party and he's inviting people to come. But the people that he's inviting began to give excuse. Who does that? The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of land. Of ground, and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Does that sound popular in church? And another said, I have married a wife. Wow. Brother Nanaya have brought his wife from Ghana. And therefore, I cannot come. Speaking excuses. Oh. So that so that servant came and shewed his Lord these things. He came to give him all the excuses that people have given. Then the master of the house, being angry. So when we go and do the work of God and people give excuses, God Get angry at excuses. You don't like it at all. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maim and the hot and the blind. So the man had given excuses. And all these excuses, they were not valid. You know, sometimes the excuses we give in church doesn't really make sense. And after they gave all that excuses, the master said that now go, invite the blind, invite the poor, invite the lame. So, Dickness, 
The original intent of the man was to invite prominent people, rich people, high class, high level, those that when we mention their name, you know they are in town. Those that are politicians, the big, big men, the ones that when they come, they say that, do you know who I am? Do you know my title? If not for church, and we are all in church, if you come to my office, you see power. And all these big, big people, they all gave excuses. Now the master said, you know what? I don't need the prominent people anymore. Go to the streets. Invite the local boys. Invite those who don't have title. Invite those that don't have the name. Invite those that have never been to school before. If the ones that are prominent are rejecting the gospel, preach it to those that need it. Amen. Yeah. And the servant said, Lord, it is done. It meant that he went and invited all the broke, the poor, the lame, and everyone. As thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Ay, 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 ay. Everybody say, there is room. Oh, beloved, do you have an empty chair close to you? It means there is still room. Ay, 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 ay. Praise God. Do we have a space at the back there? It means there is still... Hey. What is that space right there doing? It means there is enough room for people to come. Oh, somebody say anakazo. So now that there is still room, the master still went ahead. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. That's my house may be filled. Look at somebody say, the neighbor, God doesn't like vacuum. They don't understand that big word, so let me go again. Say, neighbor, God doesn't like empty room. Tell them, neighbor, God hates empty chairs. Tell them again, neighbor, God don't like spaces in the church. The intention of God is that his house will be filled. And the house will only be filled when we catch the spirit of Anakazu to go out there and compel the people to come. Hallelujah. Now, now, have you ever seen someone compelling somebody to agree to something before? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's brother Jibril in the house. Those were the days that he met sister Leticia. And propose to her. And the sister said, no. I am not ready for this, your proposal. Brother Jebrel went out and had a different plan. Came back again. Repackaged himself. And came with Anakasu. And he came with some sweet words. You know what, Leticia? You are the apple of my eye. You are the only mosquito in my net. As a matter of fact, Leticia, is your name Wi-Fi? Because I am really feeling the connection. Praise God. And all of a sudden, Brother Jibrel came with some sweet words. And whilst he was giving those words, Sister Leticia said, Are you sure that you really mean this thing? And that is how Leticia fell for Jibrel. Because he came with the spirit of Anna. Praise God. Beloved, there are people that we are going to preach to. Your first preaching will not win them. Your second preaching will not win them. But you keep going. You keep praying. You keep asking the Holy Ghost to work on them. See, our own is to go and share the gospel. And leave the rest in the hands of God. If the Lord means people to come here, Jehovah himself will do it. Somebody say, Anakazo. Praise the name of the Lord. So I just want to share with you some few points today that we need to act upon it. Number one, this is the time of salvation. This season right now that we are living in. is the time of what? 
salvation. Now, that same text, Luke chapter 14, 16 to the 17. The master says something in that text. Yeah, let's look at it carefully. And that is how we know this is the time. This is the time. He said that, then he said unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many, the verse 17, and sent his servant at the supper to say to them that were bidding, come. Everybody say come. Let's say it again. Say come. Have you ever thrown a party and welcomed people in your house before? Have you ever saw someone that is asking you to come and visit them in their home before. All right, this is the season of come. Jesus is saying that come. Come unto me, all thee that are heavily laden. For behold, I stand behind the door and knock. Anyone that hears me and open it, I will come in. This is the season Jesus is crying, come, come, come unto me. God is bidding the world to come, to come, to come. Beloved, the days of come will end one day. Where God will not bid us to come anymore. Praise God. There's this story about a man that went to an airport. And he was supposed to board a special airline. Now, the airline began to announce, Mr. Smith, please come to gate 148. Mr. Smith, please, we are waiting for you at gate 148. He is at the airport, but for some reason, he was not going. And that was the door for his airline. Mr. Smith, come. We are still waiting for you at gate number 148. The flight is about to leave. Please report to gate number 148. The airline began to do the announcement. 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 And Mr. Smith never showed up. Eventually... They changed the announcement. Mr. Smith, report to the information center. Not the gates anymore, but what? Information center. It means the plane had already... Now, whatever it is, you got to go to the information. One day, Jesus will stop saying, Come. And he would now say in that, come to the information center of hell. Go to the information center of hell to find out which room in heaven you are going to spend eternity. And which demon is going to be your roommate in heaven. Come to the information center of hell. And find out who is going to be your long-term partner in the lake of fire. This is the season he's bidding us to come. But a day is coming. God will not be come anymore. He will tell us to go to the information center. And that information center will not be pleasant today. If you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. This is the day of salvation. We need to go and compel people. We need to go and tell them about Jesus. We need to go with the spirit of Anakazu to compel them to come. Because the season is coming. The announcement for the flight would not be anymore. It will be the announcement of the information center. Hallelujah. There was this young man that a Christian tried to invite him to church. For several times, they kept inviting him. And you know how people are when you invite them and they give excuse? Oh, uh, tomorrow I'll come. 
don't worry, next week I'll come. I don't have beautiful shoes. I'm waiting to buy a new shoe. I'll come. Don't worry. Oh, next week I'll come. Oh, your, your church is right here in South River, eh? Don't worry. I always drive by the uh, church. I know the address. I know the address. I even know your pastor. Yeah, yeah. No. Is, is your pastor not Pastor Sammy? I know him. I even know the king of free year. He's in your church. I'll come. I'll come. Oh, Auntie Aquia. She go to Shakana Glory. Oh, I'll come. I'll come. I'll come. So this man kept saying he would come. And he never came. But one day, he finally came. And that day, when he came, the preaching was very powerful. You see, there are days that the preaching is good, but it's not always powerful. But on that particular day, the preaching was very powerful. Yeah, he came. And that day, the choir sang very beautifully. The song was good. It's not every day that the, the, the choir sang good. But on that particular day, the choir sang very good. And the pastor actually made an altar call on that day. But on that day, when the altar call was made, the brother did not come forward. Amen. How many of you know why the brother did not come forward? Do you want to know? Do you want to know why the brother could not come? Because that day, it was his funeral. He was dead. The service, the preaching, the beautiful song that was sung, it was all for his funeral. He had died without accepting Jesus. As his Lord and personal Savior, it was too late. Beloved, don't wait until it's too late. Either than that, one day you will come to church. The preacher will preach anyway. The choir will sing anyway. Altar call will be made anyway. But perhaps it will be your funeral. We are living in a time where people are giving excuses. But these are the days that we need to go. And share the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number two, the excuses we make in the church. The excuses. If you look at this story, there were three excuses that people gave. Luke chapter 14, 18 to 20. And those three excuses are the same excuses we are making in our time, in our days. Yeah. The first one said, and they all with one concern began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. That piece of ground stands for our property and material wealth. You see, one of the reasons why people cannot come to church is properties, material things. I have bought this. I need to attend to that. I just, I just bought a new house. I need to decree the house. I, I, I just bought this. I, I have this. I need to do this. Excuses. Excuses. And I must need to see it. I pray thee, have me an excuse. Wow. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. The oxen there stand for work. Because the oxen is used to plow the ground. They work. One of the reasons why a lot of people don't come to church is their work and their job. If there is any excuse I've ever had in this land of America about church, Pastor, my work, I work on Sunday. My, my, my schedule is on Sunday. Pastor, I'll, I'll come next week. My work. See, when they need the work, they come, we pray. God, give them the work. Now the work become a hindrance that you can't come to work. Everybody would take a vacation and rest African people. Over time, over time, over time, over time. And we don't even see the money. Beloved, when will
will you have time for God? You know something? I live in this country for a long time. Almost 20 years now. Oh yeah, I'm a senior in America now. Not just a green card holder. I'm a citizen of this country. Yeah. I'm a United States citizen. You feel me? Yes, sir. But I've come to know something about the Jewish people. Hmm? The Jews in this country. They don't joke with their Sabbath. No matter how hard a Jewish man, a Jewish woman will work over time, whatever, when it's time for worship, they will leave everything and go serve God. We are the only tribe in this country. The Indian man will go and serve God. The Arabs will go and serve God. The Muslims will go and serve God. African people, we come to this nation, we forget about our God. But do you know that it is this God that brought us here? When we were there and we didn't have anything, and we were crying for opportunities, and we were crying that, Lord, make a way for us. God did not forsake us. The Lord made a way for us. Now we have been blessed. We have been favored. Some of you, you have houses. You have cars. You have children. You have properties. And we have forgotten that it is Yahweh, Elohim, the great I am, that brought us here. I pray that this generation will have a change of mind. That we will worship God no matter what. That when it is Sunday, you will look in the eyes of your boss and your supervisor and say that without God, I am nothing. So excuse me. Let me go and worship my God. Hallelujah. Oh, I see people coming back to the church. I see people worshiping God once again. I see that our work will not be a hindrance anymore. That's the excuse they gave. I bought an oxen. So let me be excused. Those days of excuses are over. Hallelujah. Make God your priority. Put God first. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these other things. Shall be added. Some of you, God want to bless you. But you have relegated him to the background. You have lost your first love. Oh yeah, you have allowed dollar to lead you. Instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You know that the little thing you would do in the house of God can open mighty doors for you. Hallelujah. May God change our heart. Amen. And the last one, they gave an excuse. This is what he said. So the third reason why people give excuse why they cannot worship God is this one. And, and that one, hmm, most people are guilty. And another said, no, let's, let's go to the, 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 the verse 20. Uh -huh. As for this one. It's not pastor that said it. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible said it. I didn't say it. And another said, I have married a wife. And therefore, I cannot come. Another said, I have gotten a husband. Hey. Because of that, I cannot come. They marry people. And their husbands and their wives. And if they should have additional children. Hmm. Because of marriage, some people will go to hell. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I didn't say it all. The Bible says that two couples will be on the bed. One will be taken, the other. So you keep marrying. One will go. The other one. Look at your wife and say that, honey, which one will go? And which one will be here? <laughs> that alone, God is telling us that don't make marriage your priority. Make him your priority. Marriage is good. I mean, oh, as a matter of fact, when soft mommy came, am I not looking good? Uh-huh. Praise God. I, I, I was the custodian and the customer of all the kinky in the African market before she came, but by God's grace. Yeah. But that should not stop you from serving God. No. 
Well, for those of you that love marriage so much, can I bust your bubble? The Bible says that in heaven there's no marriage. Uh, so for those of you that are married and you think those that are not married, you are better than them. The day we will get there, you see that we are all equal. Yeah, praise God. So you keep enjoying. Those that are not married, when we go there, in fact, we will be better than you. <laughs> Beloved, your marriage must never, ever, ever become a hindrance for you not to serve God. In fact, marriage should make you serve God better. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do I have any married people in the house? Father, I pray over every married couple here that they will place you first, that their marriages will not become a hindrance, but rather it will become a blessing to the kingdom. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the verse 21 to the verse 22, let's take the gospel to the streets. Look at someone say, the neighbor, let's take the gospel to the streets. Yeah, we are, we are going. We got to get out of the four corners of this room. And go out there to preach Jesus. And this is how we do it. And so the servant came and showed his master the things. And the master of the house, being angry to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city. And bring in the poor, the main, the halt, and the blind. God is not selective. God wants to save everyone. The gospel must be preached to the poor. The gospel must be preached to the blind. The gospel must be preached to the rich. The gospel must be preached to the needy. When we go out there to share Jesus, beloved, let's not discriminate. Whoever the spirit of the Lord lay on your heart, tell them about Jesus. The rich man needs Jesus. The poor man needs Jesus. The black man needs Jesus. The white man need Jesus. The Arab man need Jesus. The Indian man need Jesus. Christ came to save all. So let's go to the streets. Let's share the word of God everywhere God leads you. Let the word of God be known. For ye are the light of the world. There is so much light you carry that people are waiting for you. There is a household full of darkness. But by you sharing the word of God, you bring the light of God in that house. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at someone and say, the neighbor, let your light shine. Or tell them again, neighbor, let's take the gospel to the streets. Amen. And finally, the message of the gospel has never changed. Amen. This gospel that we are preaching... The style may change. The method may change. The approach may change. But the context, the message itself is the same. It has never changed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke chapter 14 verse 23. The gospel that Jesus is asking us to go and share is the same gospel. No, no, no. It has never changed. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways, the hedges, and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. The message is still the same. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. As many as received him, even that believed on his name, to them gave them the power to become the sons of God. Many people need to hear about Jesus. Our gospel is this, that Christ came to live with mankind. Christ died on the cross to save mankind. Christ resurrected from the grave to give us hope. Christ was ascended into the heavens to go and prepare a place for us. And Christ is coming back again. Hallelujah. Shall we be on our feet? Praise God. Somebody say Anakazo. 
We are lifting up our voice and we want to pray. Father, give me the spirit of an Akazo. In this month of April, Lord, make me a dynamite of a preacher. Give me the boldness to preach a word. As I step into this week, Lord, I pray that as I tell people about Jesus, they will follow me to church. Lord, use me as a vessel of honor to bring people into your kingdom. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and begin to pray that prayer. Begin to pray that prayer. Begin to pray that prayer. Da -da Holy Spirit, da -da empower us to go. in the name of Jesus. Beloved, I want to encourage you a little bit. Just as the brother that came for the service that day, but it was his funeral. There are many people God would lead you to talk to them so that they will not encounter this situation at their funeral. Every second, people go to hell. I pray that the Lord will touch your heart. For you to know that you can save a whole generation by introducing Jesus to them. This week, we want to make a commitment unto God. Are you with me so far? Hallelujah. Lift your right hand. Lift your right hand. Yeah. We, we cannot do it on our own. But Stella, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll be able to do it. Do you know that the early church... They had to wait for several days in the upper room. They were men and women just like us. They didn't have the boldness. But the Bible said that when the Holy Spirit came, they received the boldness. Peter was able to preach. 3,000 people gave their lives. We are lifting up our right hand and we want to say that Holy Spirit baptize us with fresh fire. Make us like the early church. In the name of Jesus. Every strength we need to go out there and tell people. It's not about us. We yes, can't do Lord, it on our yes, own. But Lord, by yes, your help, Lord, yes, we can do it. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. To preach the gospel. Receive the Holy Ghost. In the, in the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus. We pray. Robert, maybe you are here or you are watching us online. You don't know Jesus. I want to introduce Jesus to you. Just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I welcome you into my heart. As my, heart, my Lord. As my Lord. And personal Savior. And personal Savior. Jesus. Jesus. Come and dwell in me. Come and dwell in me. Let your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit guide me. Guide. Write my name. Write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. Lamb Book of Life. So that when you appear in your glory, I will appear in your glory. I will not be a castaway. Not be a castaway. Thank you. Thank you for accepting me. For accepting into your kingdom. Into your kingdom. In your precious name, I pray. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, we thank God for your life. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Find a Bible-believing church to go. But if you are here in the Middlesex County, uh, most of the Old Bridge Servo, uh, Pauline area, uh, we welcome you here to join us at Shekinah Glory Assemblies of God, 120 Old Bridge Turnpike, South River, New Jersey. You are more than welcome to fellowship with us. Amen. Lift up your hands. As we step into this week, I pray the covering of God over your life. 
May God's covering be like a canopy over you. I pray for divine protection over you and your family. You shall not lack. You shall not want. May the Lord be your help in time of need. I pray for financial supply. I pray for supernatural increase. This week, I pray that the Lord will bring help in your way. Whatever you have been believing God for, may the Lord give you a testimony. May Jehovah shine his face upon you. May the Lord be merciful upon you. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we all share the grace together now? And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Greet somebody and tell him, go with the spirit of